Hey, welcome to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today I'm going to create the part you see here on screen in Creo Parametric. If you would like to try this along with me, you can find a link to the detailed drawing in the description of this video. As with most parts, there's going to be several different ways that I can approach this particular model. So let me take you through the order I'm going to work through this. I'm going to begin by creating the L-shaped extrusion that you see here, and then I'm going to round the top edge. Next, I'm going to add the half circle feature, then I'm going to add the circular hole. Next, I'm going to go to the bottom of the part and add the rectangular extrusion, and then finally, I'm going to add the angled edge on the back of this extrusion to give me my final part. I'll jump over to Creo Parametric and I'm going to begin a new part. I'll go ahead and give it a name. So I'm going to call this my Creo Tutorial 2. If you haven't watched my previous tutorial, please take a look at my videos and check that one out. I'm going to clear the check for use default template because this one is a metric part and I want to make sure I use the appropriate template. So I'm going to scroll through here and choose my millimeter part solid and click OK. All right, so as I said, I'm going to start with the L shape feature. Let's take a look at the detailed drawing and I can see that it is 38 wide by 50 tall. I can see that the front piece is 19 millimeters tall. And I can see that the tall part of the L shape is going to be 22 millimeters, the same as the radius here on the top of the part. So I'll begin by drawing this on the side view. I'll start with an extrusion and then I will select my side plane here. Then I will go ahead and start to create my shape. I'm going to just draw the basic shape and not worry about the sizes. I will come back and add my dimensions. I am going to be careful to make sure I don't accidentally create any equal constraints that I don't mean to. Middle mouse button to finish sketching and middle mouse button one more time. And then I can see all my temporary dimensions. The height should be 50. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this one to 50 and I can see that the whole drawing scales for me. This should be 22 equal to the radius of the shape up on top. And then the entire width is going to be 38. So I can do this a couple of different ways. I already have 22. I can change this temporary dimension to 16 to add up to 38. Or I can ignore that one and make my own dimension across the part here and middle mouse button to place it. And then I'll put in my 38. You can see the other dimension disappears because leaving that would over dimension the part. Once again, on my original drawing, I was given the height of 19 millimeters here. I could do the math to figure out what this value should be, or I can go ahead and just make my own dimension and set that to 19. I can now see that I have no more weak dimensions, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I can see the solid part being created. The width of this one, as I check my detail drawing, is going to be 68 millimeters. So I'll go ahead and set my depth of this extrusion to 68. I'm also going to change my type to symmetric so that I have this plane running through the middle of the part. Then I'll go ahead and click OK, and I now have my first feature. Next, I'm going to add the rounded portion to the top of this part. Once again, looking at the detailed drawing, we have a radius of 22 on this feature, the same as the thickness of this top part. So I will simply use my round command and I'll pick that top edge and then I'll specify my radius of 22. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I've got my rounded surface. Next, I'm going to create the half round shape on the front of the part here. And as I look at my detail drawing, I can see that this shape is centered and it has a radius of 18. 
Also note in the side view that the feature extrudes into the curved shape. So I'm not just going to put in a distance necessarily, I'm going to have it extrude into that next surface. So let's take a look at that in Creo. I'm going to begin by creating an extrusion on this front surface. So I'll select Extrude. I'll select that front surface. I can see that it has projected the bottom and left side of this one. I also want it to project this edge right here and also the middle plane so that I can snap to their intersection. So I'm going to come up to my sketch tab in the setup panel and select references. I'll select that horizontal line there and then the datum plane running through the middle here. Then I'll click close and I now have some reference edges there that I could use. I'm going to draw a circle at the center here and then I'll middle mouse button and I will adjust its diameter to 36. Again, we were given the radius of 18. I'll rotate my view in 3D here a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could trim this out so that I was just doing a half circle on top. I really don't need to do that because I'm just going to extrude it all together in one big mass anyways. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Notice that I have no weak dimensions because I referenced these two surfaces and snapped directly to them. I'll go ahead and click OK for my sketch and I'm ready to extrude. So as I can see, it's going the wrong direction. I'll go ahead and click the flip arrow so that it goes into the part. I could do this one of a couple different ways. One, I could put in a distance. So if I put in a distance of 36, it goes basically to the back of this part and we can see that this terminates at that curved shape. Instead, I can choose my depth option of two next. And there it's just simply going to extrude until it runs into the next surface. So this part stops at the vertical feature here and then the rest terminates at the curved feature. I'll go ahead and click OK and now I've got my next feature. Next I have the hole to add onto the front and if I look at my detail drawing I can see that it has a diameter of 14 and a depth of 16. So I can do this one of two ways here in Creo. I can simply create an extrusion by sketching the circle and extruding it in, or I can use the hole command. I'm going to use the hole command for this one. So I will go ahead and click the hole tool here in the engineering panel. By default, the type is set to linear. So this would work great if I was referencing two flat edges. Instead, I'm going to click the drop down and choose coaxial. This will allow me to click a plane and then an axis. My first click then will just be the face of this surface and then I'm going to hold control and click on the axis. Holding control allows me to get more than one placement here. If you don't hold control, it will literally deselect the face and select the axis instead. So very important there. Next, I'm going to click on the Shape tab, and I'm going to make sure that it's set to Blind. Then I'm going to specify my diameter and my depth. So we saw that it was a diameter 14 and a depth of 16. Then I'll go ahead and click Finish, and I now have my hole cut in there. Now we're ready to work on the last feature, the rectangular shape with the angled edge on the bottom. Let's take a look at the detail drawing. I can see that it is a rectangular shape and it is dimensioned 22 millimeters in from the left and right side. I can also see in the side view that it's 12 millimeters tall and then it will be extruded back at a depth of 95 millimeters. So I'm going to draw the small rectangular shape and extrude it 95 millimeters. You could also draw it from the side. Draw a 95 by 12 rectangle and extrude it the other direction. So back in Creo then, I'm going to create an extrusion on this front surface. I'll choose my extrude tool, then click that front face. I can see that I've already got a reference here for the bottom, which is great. I can snap to that with my rectangle. I can also see that I've already got a reference on the left side. I'm going to eventually use one to dimension from the right side as well. 
but when I place my dimension, it should reference that for me automatically. So I'm just going to choose my rectangle tool, and then I'll pick a point somewhere on the bottom edge here, and then a second point for my rectangle. I'll go ahead and middle mouse button to finish that drawing, and then I'm going to modify the height dimension to be 12, and then this dimension is going to be 22. Now this dimension, I can go ahead and do the math and figure out what it would be, or instead I'm just going to dimension the right side of this rectangle from the right side of the part, middle mouse button, and also set this to 22. And then I'll click OK. Now I'm ready to extrude this. It's going the wrong direction, so I'll flip it with the arrow. Then I will specify my depth, which is going to be 95. And then I will finish. Now for my last feature, I need to angle this back edge. So let's take a look at the detail drawing one more time. And we can see this is basically going to be a 12 by 6 angled shape that's coming off of it. I could do this with an extrusion. I can also do this using the chamfer command. I'm going to use the chamfer command for this one. So back here in Creo, I am going to begin my chamfer command here in the engineering panel. I will select the edge. And then if I look at my dimension scheme, it's currently D by D, which means both distances are going to be the same. I'm going to change this to D1 by D2 so that we have two different distances. I'll set distance 1 to 6 and distance 2 to 12. And as you can see, that's not quite what I was looking for. It gives me a 6 by 12 chamfer, but it's going the wrong way. I'll go ahead and click the flip arrow here. And now I can see that it is going to chamfer it in the direction that I want. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can see my final part is complete. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please give this video a like. And please check out my other Creo tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.